lightning or in brain. When the hurly burly's done, when the battle is lost and won, that will be your set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath, there to meet with death. I come, Grey Valley. Pot of calls, anon. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Out of the fog and fill the air. Report in the scene of life's place of the revolt in the state. This is the sergeant, like the good and hearty soldier fought against my captivity. Hail, great friend, say to the king knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful and stern, as two spent swords that do cling together and choke their art, the merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiple villainies of nature do swarm upon from the western isles with curds and galapas is supplied, and fortunate on his damn quarry smiling, showed like a rebel's war. But all's too weak. For brave Macbeth, both well, deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which, which smoked with bloody execution, like Valor's minion carved out his passage, till he faced the slave, which there shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the knave to the chops, and fixed his head upon our battlements. O oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman, as whence the sun gives its reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders, so from that spring whence comfort seems to come, discomfort swells. Mark, king of Scotland, mark. No sooner does his hand with valor armed, Compel these skipping currents to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lords surveying vantage with furbished arms and a new supplies of men begin a fresh assault. Dismayed this not our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes, as sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion. If I say sooth, I must report they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly be double strokes upon the foe. Except they were meant to bathe in reeking wounds or memorize another Golgotha. I cannot tell, but I am faint. My gashes cry for help. So well thy words speak as thy wounds, they smack with honor both. Go get him, surgeons. It shipped in the scar. 
I'll drain him dry as hay. Sweet shall neither night nor day. Clean upon a penthouse lid, he shall live, man forbid. Very seven nights, nine times nine, shall he dwindle peak and pine. And though his car cannot be lost, yet it shall be to his cost. What could I have? Show me, show me! Here the pilot's thumb. Break this homeward as he could come. A drop, a drop, make bed the thumb. We are sisters, hand in hand, posters of the sea and land. Thus to go about, about, thrice to thine, and thrice to mine, and thrice again to make up nine. Peace the charms wound up. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. How far is it called to forest? Oh, what are these? So weird and so wild in their time, but not the lucky inhabitants of earth. And yet, we're on it? Live you or you not, a man may come. You seem to understand. But each your chalky fingers lay upon her skinny lips. You should be women, yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak, if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Lamas. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth, thou shalt be king hereafter. But good sir, why do you seem to start with weird things that do sound so fair? I have named truth. Are ye fantastical? Or that indeed to an object which I believe ye show. My noble partner, who you greet with present grace, a great prediction of a noble habit and of royal hope, that he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you then look into the seed of time and tell me which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Yeah? Hail. Hail. Let's open bed, the creator. Not so happy, yet much. Happier, thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So I'll come with them and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all of them. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. Like Fiddle's death, I know I'm fain of the promise, but how of Cawdor? The fame of Cawdor lives, a prosperous gentleman. And to be king stands not within the prospect of to leave, no more than to be Cawdor. Say, from whence you owe this strange intelligence? Or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such pathetic greeting? Speak, I charge you! The earth have bubbles, as the water has, and neither of them withered. Are they banished? Into the air, and what seemed to grow melted, as breath into the wind, which they had stayed. Or such things as we do speak about, or be eaten on the insane that takes the reason prisoner. Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And fame of Cawdor too, would it not so? So I saw the same tune in words. Uh, who's there? The king hath happily received, Becca, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in Greta's way, his wonders and his praises do contend should be thine or his. Silence with that, and viewing over the rest of the self-same day, he finds thee in the stout bridge ranks. Nothing to fear what thy son could say. Strange images of death. As thick as tail came post to post, and everyone did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defense, and bore them down before him. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, to herald thee into his sight, not to pay thee. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade thee from him call thee Bane of Cosmer. What? Can the devil speak true? The fame of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the fame lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did live grow with hidden health and vantage, or with that of both he labored in his country's wrath, I know not. But treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown. Lamas and Faith Cargo. The greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the fate of Cargo to me promise no less to them? That trust me will like it and kindle you onto the ground, besides the thing of Cargo. But it is strange that oftentimes to win us to our hearts, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. 
Win us an honest trifle that betrays the deepest consequence. A cousin's a word of Brady. Two truths are told. As happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial fee. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill. It cannot be good if ill. Why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in the truth? I am fain of cargo. It's good. Why do I yield to that suggestion? Whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our partners wrapped. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stone. New honors come upon them, like our strange garments leave not to the whole, but with the aid of use. Come what? Come may. Time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor. My dull brain was rocked with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered, for every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us throw the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having waited. Let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. Is execution done on Fodor, or not does the commission yet return? My liege, they are not yet come back. But I have spoken with one who saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth the deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one who studied in his death, throwing the dearest thing he owed us to work care of his There is no art to find construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute Oh, valiant cousin, instead of my ingratitude, even now weighs heavy on me. Thou art so before, that swift as we your recompense is slow to overtake thee. But thou hast less deserved the portion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, or if I do, but more than all can pay. The service and loyalty I owe, and doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state. Children and servants, which do but what they should, by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. Well, come hither. I have begun to thank thee, and the labor. I have begun to thank thee, and the labor to make thee full of growing. Noble bank of thou hast no less deserved, no less to have done so. I will unfold thee and hold thee to my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. Thou precious joys, wanton in fullness. Hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, veins, and you who possess the years. Know that we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, who we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, which honor must, not unaccompanied, invest him only. But signs of nobleness, like stars, shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Inverness, and by this further to you. The rest. Is like which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger. Make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. Where would you go? The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down, or else only. For in my way it lies. Stars, I dream fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. But I think it's the hand. Yet let that be which be I fears when it is done to see. True, for the banker, for the young club, he is both so valiant, and in his commendations are fed. Come, it is a banker to me before to bid us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. 
He writes well, and his great love, Shabbos' spirit, hath pulled him to his house before us. Fair and noble hostess. We fear guests. More servants ever have theirs themselves, and what is theirs in count? Their Make their audit and your highness's pleasure, still to return your own. Give me a moment, and talk to me to my house, for we love him highly, and shall continue our good graces towards him by your leave, hostess. If it is done, but it is done, then to a well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trample up the consequence, and catch with his surcease success, that what this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. In these cases, we still have judgment here, that we teach bloody instructions, which being taught, return to plague their inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chance to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his subject, and his kinsman, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should, against his murder, shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues Lead like angels, trumpet tongued, against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe, striding the blast for heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, and tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to break the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition. Or leaps itself and falls on the other. How now? What do you say? He has almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Have he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late. And I've bought golden opinions from all sorts of people which would be worn now in their newest spots, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk where you dressed yourself? Have it slept since? And wakes it now. He looks so green and pale, and what it did so for you. From this time, such I account my love. Art thou a fear to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem? That if I dare not, wait upon I would. Let the poor cat in the attic. Prithee, peace, I dare do all. This may become a man who dares do more as none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than a man. Your time, nor place did then and here, and yet you would make them both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given some. I know how tender it is to love the babe that knows me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked the nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. Had I so sworn, as you have done to this, if we should fail, we fail. But screw your courage for the sticking place and will not fail. But Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his hard day's journey soundly invite him. His two chamberlains will I, with wine and wassail, so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep their drenching natures lies as in a death, what could not you and I perform upon the unguarded donkey? What not put upon his spongy officers, who shall bear the guilt of our great club? Bring forth men, children of them, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but man's. Will it not be received? When we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber, and use their very daggers that they have done, who dares receive an other, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible fate. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. The false face must hide, 
Biblical smart class. Sorry, son. A foolish thought to say a sorry son. There's one. Did laugh 
in his sleep, in one cried murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, and they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. They are too large together. One cried, God bless us, and all men the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands. But sitting there, fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I am most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways. So it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more, Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep, that knits up the rabbled sleep of care, of death, of each day's life, sore labors back, woe of her mind, sheep nourisher and life's What wife. do you mean? Still a cry, Sleep no more to all the house. Glamis hath murdered sleep, and therefore come, shall sleep no more, Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go! Get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go. Carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done, but on it again I dare not. Of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. It is the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do leave, um, gild the faces of the rooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. <laughs> is that knocking? How is it? When every noise of pulse. But hands are here, <laughs> they pluck out my eyes. But all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my head. Now, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas and carnitine, making the green one red. My hands are poor color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire me to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it that your constancy hath left you unattended? Hark, we're not here. Get on your nightgown, lest the Cajun call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, to our best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking! I would not come. Of three things. 
What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir, nose painting, sleep, and yearning. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, yet takes away from the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes them, it mars him. It sets them on and it sets them off. It makes them stand to and not stand to. It persuades him, disheartens him. In conclusion, equivocates him in sleep and giving him the lie, he'll leave them. I believe drink gave me the lie last night. That it is, sir. And the very throat on me, I requited him for his lie. And I think, being too strong for him, Though he took her my life sometime, yet I made the ship to catch him. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awakened him. Here we come. Good morning, Good morning, Good Is the king stirring, what do you think? Not yet. He did demand me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet it is why. The labor we do love to this estate. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for it is my limited service. Goes the king hence today? Yeah, he does. He did the point, so. The night has been unruly for me today. Archimedes were going down, and, as they say, the mentees heard that air, strange screens of death, been prophesied with accents terrible, of giant combusting and confused events. New hatch this mortal time, the obscured bird, Clem, the living long night, some say the earth, was fever, she did cheer. Twas a rough night. My young remembrance did not hurt me. Hello to it. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive, nor name thee! What's, What's the matter? matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Whilst sacrilegious murder hath broke off the Lord's anointed temple, and so forbids the life of the bandit! What is it you said? The life? I mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new organ. Do not bid me speak, see, and then speak yourselves! Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donald Bay Malcolm! Awake! Shake off this downy sleep, this counterfeit, and look on death itself! Up, up, and see the great room's image! Oh, Banquo, Malcolm, as if from your grave, rise up and countertense this horror! Ring the bell! What's the business that so hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak! Speak! Gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I speak. The repetition in a woman's ear were murder as a bell. Oh, Banquo, Banquo! Our royal master's murder. Well, alas, what, in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear enough, really contradict thyself and say that it is not so. But I would die an hour before this chance. I had lived a pleasant time. For from this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys, renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere leaves is left to spot the rag of. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murder. By whom? Those of his chamber as the scene have done it. Their faces and their hands were bound for blood in so were the daggers which unlikely found upon the pillows we stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did to kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of my violent love I ran the cause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. And his gash stabs with like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. Then the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breach the door. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make love known? Help me out, tongue! Come to a lady! Why do we hold our tongues? 
that most may claim this argument for hours. What should be spoken here, where our fates, hid in an honor hole, may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears not yet brewed. Not our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when our naked frailties get that suffer and exposure, let us meet with touching his most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God, I stand and then against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. So do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well, well contented. Friday this afternoon. Ah, my good lord. We should have asked desire to advise. 
who still have been both brave and prosperous in the state's council. But we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you go? As far, my lord, as we fill the time. To this and supper, though not my horse the better. I must be the horror of the night, for a dark hour of the plague. Then love our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasites. We may hear us with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when there we we shall have cause of state to pray against you. I use a horse to do to your turning. Go quickly on to you. Ah, my good lord, our time does come upon us. We should have else desired your advice, but I wish your horse is swift and sure foot, and so I need to move to the bat. Let every man be master of this time until seven at night to make society and speak of him. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. Well then, God be with you. Draw, a word with you. Ten of those men are present. The dark, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which we fear. Tis much he dares, and he has a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There's none but he to fear, and under him my genius is removed, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when they first put the name of king upon me. And bade them speak to him. Then, prophet like, they held him father to a line of kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter, and my brightness to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeded. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan have I murdered. Put rancors into the vessel of my peace only for them. In my eternal doom, given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seas of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Now, go to the door and stay there to It was, so please, your highness. Well then, now, have you considered of my speeches? No, that it was he, in times past, who had you so under fortune. He was thought to have been our innocent self. This I made good to you, in our last conference past, in probation with you. How you were born in hand, how the cross, the instruments, who wrought with them, and all things else, that might to half a soul, or to an ocean craze, say thus did bank you made it known to us, and did so, and then went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Be so gospeled to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever. We are men, I wish. I, in the catalog, ye go for men. Hounds, greyhounds, mongrels. Spaniels, curs, shuffs, water rocks, and demi wolves are kept all by the name of dogs. It is the value of fire which distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, everyone according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him closed. Whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike, and so of men. Now, you have a station in that file, not in the worst, Frank of man, but say it. I shall put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off and grapples you, the heart and love of us, who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world. Hasto and says that I am worthless when I do to spite the world. And I, another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would give my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on it. 
Most of you know Bankla was your enemy. True, my lord. So he is mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my years of life. And though I could, with bare faced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will about him. And I must not. For there are certain friends that are both his and mine. Whose loves I may not drop, but where of this fall who I myself struck down. And then it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry, weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, before what you command us. Though our power spirit shine through you, within this hour's most, I will advise you to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment aunt. Work must be done tonight. Something from the palace. What a slot that I require clearance. And with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in the work. Cleons, his son that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight to abide with him. This concluded, Tranquil, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must fight it out tonight. Join with us. Macbeth, he needs not our mistrust. 
since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction just. Then stand with us. The West Yak glimmers with some shoes a day and spurs the lady traveler of peace to gain the time we in and near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses. Give us light there. Oh. The tis he, the rest, that are within the note of expectation already are in the court. His horses go about almost a mile, but he does usually from hence to the palace gate make it the walk. A light! A light! Tis he stand to it! Go the rain tonight, let it come down. What is that? We struck out the light. Was it not the way? There's but one down. The sun is fled. We have lost the best half of our affair. Well, let's away and say how much is done. Quite unmanned in 
Gollum. If I stand here, I saw him. By or shame. But I've been shed air now. In the olden times, a human statue purged the gentle wheel. And since two murders have been performed, too terrible for the ear. The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die, and there an end. But now they rise again. Twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Do not use at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know you. Come, love and health to all. Bring me some wine. Go full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table. To our dear friend Benko, whom we miss, but he were here. To all, and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avaunt, and quit my sight, that the earth hides thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation, and those eyes which thou dost flare with. Think of this, good Peters, but as a thing of custom. Is no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. But man dare, I dare, approach thou like the rugged Russian bear. The arm grown of so the high type take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. For we alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy soul. If trembling I have it then, protest to me the baby of a girl. Hence! Horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! For so, being gone, I am mad again. Pray you to the stone. Well, this place to the world, broken to me in the most entire disorder. Can such things be? And over, must like a summer's cloud without our special wonder. You make me strange, even to the disposition that I owe. And now I think you can behold such sights. And keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. The question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going. Go at once. Good night and better help. Attend this fantasy. Kind good night to all. Denied, so that I say, 
he is above all things well. And I do think that he, Duncan's sons, under his team, as hands of peace coming, he shall not, they shall find a pure heart, so shall peace, but peace from God's words, because he failed, is because he has to have his peace, I am the death of his distress. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of her, lives in the English court, and is received with the most pious Edward with such grace that the malevolence of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. Jacob Macduff is gone to pray the Holy King upon his aid, to wait Northumberland and warlike seaward, that by the help of these, with him above to ratify the works, we may again give our tables meat, sleep to our knights, free from our feasts and banquets bloody knives, do faithful homage and receive free honors, all which we find for now. And this report has so exasperated the king that he prepares for some attempt of war. Sent he to Macduff? And he did, and with an absolute, sir, not I. The cloudy messenger turns me his back, as if to say, you'll rue the time that clogs me with his answer. And that well might advise him to a caution to hold what distance. His wisdom can provide some boy angel. Fly to the court of England and unfold his message. Ere he come, some swift blessing may soon return to this all suffering country under a hand of cups. I'll send my prayers with him. Beware, Macduff. Beware, 
day of life. Dismiss me, Lenrath. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast not my fear right. One he will not be commanded! Here's another. We're put into the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. And I three ears, I hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macbeth. What need I fear of thee? But yet, I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell how hard of fear it lies in sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but see not to it. Be lion mentioned, proud, and take no care who chafes, who frets, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be, until great burning wood to hide the snake hill shall come against him. <coughs> That will never be. Who can impress the force? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound root. Sweet bonements, good. Rebellious dead, rise never till the wood of Burnham rise. And our high place Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, and pay his breath to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much. So make was issue of a reign in this kingdom. Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on me. Tell me, why seeks that cauldron? And what noise is this? Show, show, show. Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down, like crowd must see mine eyeballs. My hair. The other gold bound brow is like the first, the third is like the former filthy hags. A fourth? Stark to eyes, what? When this line stretch out into the crack of doom. Another yet, a seventh, I'll see no more. And yet the eighth appears. Who bears a glass that shows me many more? In some I see the twofold balls and trouble scepters carried. And now I see tis true. For the blood bolted Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his. But is this so? Aye, sir, this is so. But why is it that death thus amazed thee? Comes the sirs, may we turn up his rights, we show him best of our delights. I'll turn the air to give a sound, while you perform your antique ground. And thus this great king may kindly say, her duties did his welcome pay. Where are they? Gone? This pernicious hour, then I have cursed in the calendar. Come in, but not there. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. He may not buy you. No, he will. Infected be the error on may ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was it came by? It is is two or three, my lord, that bring you on. Picked up his from the England. Thanks to England! Aye, my lord. Time. Thou anticipates to return exploits. The flighty purpose never is overtook unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with actions, be it thought and done. A castle of map death I will surprise. Seize upon life, give to the edge of the sword his wife his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his life. A boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose fool. No more sense. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. Leave his wife to leave his babes, 
his mansions and his titles in a place for whence himself does fly? He he loves us not. He wants the natural touch for the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little as the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. <coughs> My dearest cuz, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further. But cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear. But Float upon a wild and violent sea, try to move. I take my review. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst shall cease, or else climb upwards where they were before. My pretty cousin, bless him. Father, he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool, should I stay longer? It would be my disgrace, years longer. I take my review at once. Father's dead. What will you do now? How will you live? As the birds do, Mother. What? With worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou hast never fear the net nor lime, the pit bull nor the jib. Your father's dead. What will you do now? Um, birds, they are not set for, and my father is not dead for all that. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? <laughs> why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell him again. <laughs> thou speaks with all thy wit, yet I faith with wit enough for me. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why? One that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor. They must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Everyone. Well, who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swears are fools, for there are liars and swears, and now they beat the honest men and hang up them. Now. God help thee for monkey, but how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you would weep for him. If he were not, it shall be a sure sign that I shall quickly have a new father. Poor prattler, how those talks. Thus, Gurdon, I am not too known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach near me. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not down here, hence with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage, to do worse to you or felt cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm, but I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometime accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say, I have done no harm? What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such a spouse may find him. He is a traitor! Thou liest, thou shut up here, villain! What you end up in the back! <laughs> Love honest. You have loved him well. 
He hath not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may discern of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry God. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. But I shall grieve your pride. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright to the brightest fell, who all things foul must wear the grass of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hope. Chance there where I did find my doubt. Why in that bond is left you wife and child? Those precious motives of strong knots of love without leave taking? I pray you let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, but I shall forgive Believe, believe the poor country. Great tyranny lay thou basis. Sure, goodness dare not check thee. Where thou thy wrongs? The title is a fear. Fare thee well, Lord. I will not be the villain that thou thinkst, for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the retiste to boot. Be not offended. I speak not in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think with all there would be hands uplifted in my right, and here from gracious England my offer would be thousands. But for all this, when I should tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, that my poor country shall have more vices than before, more suffer, and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of my so grafted head, and it shall be opened. Black Macbeth shall seem as pure as snow, and the poor state to seem him as a lamb be compared to my Confine the scars. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned than evils to talk that bad. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids cannot fill up the cistern of my lust. In my desire, all consonants, impediments, or or better that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such a one rain. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and the fall of many kings. But fear not to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in the spacious plenty and yet seem cold. The time you may so put me. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as in greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affections, such a standishless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels in his other's houses. In my desire, all constant impediments would or better than to oppose my will. That I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper. Quarrels with more pernicious virtue than summer seem lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings. But do not fear, for Scotland has poisons to fill the will of your mere own. All these are portable with our graces wave, but I have none. The king becoming graces, as justice, verity, temperance, stableness. Bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, for it do I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime acting in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of conquer into hell, uproar the universal beast, and found all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland, Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to cover, no, not to live, a oh, nation miserable. With an untitled tyrant, bloody scepter, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since that, the truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accused and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that bore thee, up and upon her knees, and on her feet, died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These evils that thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast, thy hope ends here. <coughs> so, this noble passion, child of integrity, I throw my soul white to the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. 
devilish Macbeth by many of these trains that sought to rid me into his power. In modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste. But God above deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction and will speak my own attraction. Here, abjure the taints of grace I lay upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, and no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow and let no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine in my poor country's demand. Whither before thy hip approach, good seaward and ten thousand warlike men already at a point was setting forth. Now all together, and the chance for goodness be like our warranty quarrel. Why are you silent? So welcome, unwelcome things at once. It's hard to reconcile. <laughs> well, more and more, the king forth, I pray you. I 
could not but remember such things were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and play their part? The sinful, mapped up, they were struck for thee! Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but mine! They'll slaughter other souls! Heaven, rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. I could play the woman with my eyes and grab her with my heart. But gentle heavens cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring forth this fiend of Scotland in thyself and put him in my sword's life. If he spare, heaven forgive him too. This time was man. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready, our luck is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for the shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long, and it refines the day. I have but two nights watch with you, but you perceive no truth in the report. When was it last year? Since his majesty went into war, I have seen her. Look. 
foot to the bleeding and grim alarm in sight the mortified man. Near Burn and Wood shall we go meet them. That way they are coming. Who knows if Don may be with his brother? The son said he is not. I have a father. Of all the gentry there is Seawood's son, and many young refuse that even now protest of those men. What does the tyrant? Great guns and navy strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad, others that lesser hate him. You call it valley's fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands. Now newly revolts, upbraided his faith breach. Those he command move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robe upon a doorfish thief. Who then shall blame his pestered senses to recoil and start when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march we on to give obedience where it is truly owed. Meet we the medicine of the sickly wheel, and with him pour we in our country's purge, each drop of us. Or oh, so much as it needs to do this sort of crime and drown the weeds. Brother, met we our march towards Brown. Bring me no more reports, but then fly off. To burn a wood removed to Dunsinane, I cannot take the fear. That's the boy now. Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall ever have power upon me. And fly, I'll say, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I swear by, and the heart I bear, shall never sag with doubt, nor shake with fear. The double deadly black thou green faced gloom, where God smell that consular. There's ten thousand. Geese, villain, soldiers, sir, go prick thy face, and never at thy fear thou lily liver girl, but soldiers patch, death of thy soul, those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers weigh face? The English horses, so please you. Take thy face hence. Satan, I am sick at heart. When I behold, Satan, I say, which will cheer me ever or deceive me now? I live long now. My way of life is fallen into the sand. The yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age, is honor, love, obedience, troops of friends. I must not look to happen. But in their stead, curses, not loud, but deep. Mouth, honor, breath. Which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not. Satan! What's your gracious pleasure? What news more? All was confirmed by a lord, which was reported. Then I'll fight. Till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my arm. This thought needed yet. <laughs> I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scour the country round. Hang those. The talk of faith. Give me my armor. And does thy patient, Doctor? Not so sick, my lord. But she's struggled by thick knowing fancies that keep her from the rest. Cure her of that. Can that not minister to a mind disease? Pluck from the memory of rooted sorrow. Raise out the written troubles of the brain. And with some sweet, oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Their patients minister to himself. Their physics to the dogs, I'll none of it. Come, put my armor on, give me my staff, Satan said, out! Doctor, the things fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch, if thou wouldst. Doctor, gasp the water of my lap. Find her disease and purge it to a sound and pristine health. I would applaud thee. The very echo that I should applaud again was off. What rhubarb? So now, what purgative drug would scour these English hands? Here is thou of them. Aye, my good lord. What preparation makes us easy? Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsany. I hope the 
take some here can the chambers to give you sleep. Clean the outfit nothing. What's what is this before us? So what a part of Let every man hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air and report to us. It shall be done. We learn that the confident tyrant keeps still and done to me, and will endure our setting down before us. Taste his main hope. For where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt. And none serve with him the constrained things whose hearts are absent too. But our just censures attend the true event, and put we on industrious soldiers. Now is the time we do to the we will say that we know, therefore, advance the war. Hang hey, out! Our banners on the upward wall of the cry, and still they come. Our castle strength will laugh the siege to scorn. Here, let them lie. The famine and the army with them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours? We would have met them dead. Beard to beard and beat them backward home. What was that noise? It is the cry of women, my good lord. I have almost forgot the taste of food. The times have been. My senses would have cooled to hear an extra. And my Fell of hair, and a dismal tree that sprouts and stirs thy burning. I have supped full with horrors. Dying, familiar to my slumber, stopped, could not want to start. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. You should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a work. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterday to let it fool the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow, a poor play that shuts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious, my lord. Um, I shall report from which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir, as I did, stand my watch upon the hill. I look at your burnham, and you know me thought. The wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me adore your wrath. If it not be so, within this three mile, may you see it come in. I say, a moving grove. If thou speakest false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive to famine plead me. If thy speech be sooth, I care not if thou lost for me as much. I pull in resolution, and begin to doubt the equivocation of the theme that lies like truth. Fear not. So Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and now a woods come to a Dunsinane. On, on and out! If this which he vouches does appear, there is no flying hence, no terrible here. I begin to be weary of the sun, in which the estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell, the wind, come rack, at least we'll die with harness on our back. Than any is in hell. 
My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to my ear. No, no more fearful. Thou liest, a war tyrant. With my sword I'll prove the lie thou speaks. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. 
He only lived but until he was a man, for which no sooner has Alice confirmed the unshrinking station where he fought, but like a man he died. And he is dead? I and brought up the field. Your sorrow must not be measured by its worth, but then it hath no ends. And he is first before? I on the front. Why then? God's soldier be he, and I as many sons as I have heirs, I would not wish them to a fair death. So is now as well. Sorry, that's not spending. It's worth no more. You say he fought with well and gave the score. So God be with you. Here comes your person. Hail! 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 King, so thou art. Behold, where stood the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compressed with thy kingdom's pearl, that speak my salutation in their minds, and whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland. Henceforth be earls the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. This multitude, which will be planted newly with the tide, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled in the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend like queen, who, as this thought by himself with violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace. We shall perform a measure, time and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, who we invite to see his crown and skill.